Welcome back. This is the second video in a two-part series. We'll be adding to the foundation built in the first video, so if you haven't watched it already, we recommend starting there. In this video, we'll use variables to add additional interactions that will dynamically change the volume icons and display an alert message when the volume reaches a certain level. But this project is about more than just making an interactive volume bar. By the end of the video, you'll have the skills needed to build prototypes that can be configured to fit different needs across your designs without having to remake any interactions. Open up the same design file you used for the first video and let's get started. Taking a look at our icon component set, you'll notice that there are variants that indicate when the volume is low, medium, loud, and mute. We can apply a string variable to these variants so that when the variable updates, so does the variant in our design. We'll also need two number variables to define the medium and loud volume amounts that will trigger each icon change. Before we create new variables, let's organize our current ones into their own group. To create a group, hold Shift and select the variables. Then right-click in the panel and select New Group with Selection. Double-click on the new group to rename it. We'll call ours Volume Control. To create our new variables outside of this group, select All Variables in the Variables panel. Then create a new string variable. Name it Icon Property and give it a value of Current Volume for now. Select the volume icon in the episode frame. In the design panel, go to its variant property and click Assign Variable. From the dropdown, select Icon Property. To see how this works, replace current volume with mute. See how the icon changes? As long as the value of our string variable is an exact match for one of the variant property values, you can use the string variable to switch between them. Since our starting volume level is set to zero, we'll keep our string variable as mute. It's good practice to organize your variables into groups. So let's select the icon property variable and add it to a new group called icon. Now we can create the number variables we'll use to define the volume amounts that will trigger the icon changes. Select the all variables group and we'll create two number variables. Name one medium percent and set the volume to 0.4. Name the other loud percent and set it to 0.7. Organize the new variables into a new group called percent volume marker. You might be wondering, why are we using a decimal? Well, this is an easy way to use a percentage of the toolbar width as our trigger value instead of an exact pixel amount. If we ever decide to change the width of the bar, the percent value will stay the same without needing any extra adjustments. Now that our variables are set up, we can add a new interaction to our plus button. Let's start with the icon for low volume. Add a new conditional to the plus button. When do we want the low volume icon to appear? The low icon should appear when our current volume level is less than 40% of our maximum volume amount, which is set to 143. If we wrote this using literal values, our conditional would look like if volume is less than 0.4 times 143. But since we have variables to represent these amounts, our conditional is if volume is less than medium percent, times max volume. If our volume passes this conditional check, we'll use the set variable action to change the value of our icon property variable, which is representing the icon variant to low. Next, add another conditional for the medium volume level. We can use the same logic here. This time, we have two conditions we need met for our medium icon to appear. First, 
The volume level needs to be greater than or equal to 40%, our medium percent level of the maximum volume. Second, the volume level needs to be less than 70%, our loud percent level of our max volume. We can use the AND operation to check for both of these requirements. Our conditional is, if volume is greater than or equal to medium percent times max volume, and volume is less than loud percent times max volume, set icon property to medium. Woof! Finally, let's add one more conditional for our loud volume icon. The loud volume icon should appear if the volume level is greater than or equal to 70%, our loud percent level of our maximum volume. Our conditional is, if volume is greater than or equal to loud percent times max volume, set icon property to loud. Now let's test it out. Looks great. Time to set up the minus button. We can start by applying the same medium icon conditional to the minus button that we did to the plus button. The expression is the exact same. It will check to see that the volume is within the medium range. Next, we'll apply a conditional for the low icon. Create a new conditional and set it to if volume is less than medium percent times max volume and volume is greater than zero, set icon property to low. Without checking if the volume is greater than zero, the low icon could be applied when the volume equals zero since zero is less than our medium percentage. But as you'll see in our next step, we want the mute icon to be applied when the volume reaches zero. Now that our low and medium icons are set, let's focus on our mute icon. Our mute icon should only appear if the current volume level is equal to zero. Create a new conditional and enter, if volume is equal to zero, set icon property to mute. Go ahead and test your prototype to see the icons in action. The last thing we'll do is add a high volume notification to alert users to the risks of listening at high volumes. To do this, we'll use two variables, a Boolean variable to turn on the visibility of our alert notification and to switch the color of the volume indicator, and a number variable to define when those changes should occur. Start by making a new Boolean variable, name it alert, and leave it set to false. Apply it to the alert notification by selecting the sheet alert layer nested under the episode frame in the layers panel. Right clicking the eye icon in the layer properties of the alert notification and selecting the alert Boolean. Next, select the volume display instance nested inside the episode frame and click the variable icon next to the alert component property. Apply the alert Boolean. Set the volume variable to a number greater than zero so we can see the indicator, and toggle the Boolean between true and false in the variables panel to see it in action. Make sure to reset volume to zero and alert to false when you're done. Add the Boolean variable to a new group called alert. Our final variable will define when the alert should display. Add a number variable and name it alert percent. Set its percent to 0.9 and drag it to the percent volume marker group. We want the alert to pop up and the volume indicator color to change when it reaches or goes beyond our alert percent value. Add a new conditional to the plus button. If volume is greater than or equal to alert percent times max volume, set alert to true. For the minus button, we want the alert to disappear and the volume indicator color to change back to white when it decreases beyond the trigger point. 
Add a new conditional to the minus button. If volume is less than alert percent times max volume, set alert to false. Now open the preview and make sure everything's looking good. Everything's working just like it should. But of course, changes are inevitable. How would we go about making updates to these designs after a round of feedback with our team? That is where the value of a configurable prototype really comes in. Let's say based on team feedback, we need to change the width of the volume bar, have the medium icon turn on at a lower level, and add more increments before reaching the max. Because we use variables, we can make all of our edits from the variables panel. If we hadn't, we'd have to edit these values in each and every one of our interactions. And just like that, we were able to edit our designs and prototype. And if the team wanted to design this page for a tablet screen, well, we could simply add a new mode for our variables and avoid setting up our prototype all over again. But that's a project for another day. Not all prototypes require this level of configuration. But when used to your advantage, variables can save you and your team a lot of production time. Let us know in the comments how you and your team are using variables and prototypes. For more examples of advanced prototypes, check out the article linked in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more Figma tutorials.